Hey everyone, I need your attention for one minute. This is not one of those ads. This is something that has changed my entire life. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that this is all about personal development as the foundation for everything good in your life. And this podcast is now sponsored by Growth Day, which is the world's first all-in-one personal development app. I mean, oh my gosh, can you imagine having everything all in one place that you need to create? create the life that you want, now you can. So if you've been struggling with your motivation, your mood, your productivity, or your purpose, you have to check this out. Growth Day helps you consciously change your life and achieve your potential. It has all the self-improvement tools, motivational classes, and life coaching all in one place. So many of us want to improve our lives, but the question is how? Where do we start? What do we use? How do you get unstuck? How do you make self-improvement stick? Well, research shows how. It's when you consistently journal, track your habits, set goals, learn from empowering mentors, and challenge yourself that you'll be happier, healthier, and more successful. But let me ask you something. Where do you actually do all of your personal development work? I have to tell you that over 300,000 people use Growth Day for a reason. It works. It's the world's number one software for self-improvement. Growth Day has an amazing mindset journal that I absolutely love, a habit tracker, and a goal-setting system. In fact, I bet if you went to my stories this week, you probably saw me using the journaling app and telling you to do it too, because it's the first time that journaling has ever actually stuck consistently in my life because of this app. And best of all, Growth Day has live inspirational classes every single week from the world's top motivational speakers and life coaches. These are people who have impacted my life in huge ways. These are mentors who I already knew and loved. In fact, this is something that's so huge for me, you guys. I personally teach a class in Growth Day every single month, and it is one of the most fun things that I get to do, and I'd love to see you there. These classes will truly shift your life. There's always something new that you will learn. So join me in 300,000 achievers growing our lives with actual real intention. Visit growthday.com slash Lori for a free trial. Yes, you can try this for free. So go to growthday.com slash Lori and go live your best life. You guys, that's growthday.com forward slash Lori. And I can't wait to see you there. I know that you might want to go all in on that one thing right now, but I actually don't know if it's a great idea. (laughs) I actually, no, it's not a great idea. I think it's so brilliant to be looking at your life as how many different forms of income can I get into my bank account? And not just that, how many different forms of income can I get into my bank account with minimal work, with the most minimal work? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Scenes of Building a Business. I am sitting here with my chief of staff, Lauren Kuhlman, and we're so excited because we're going to answer your questions this week. Lauren, what is up? How are you? Hi, I am feeling really good today, actually. It's <laughs> We've Friday. had a big project this week. It's oh. Friday. We got the project done. I mean, the deadline was yesterday, so I knew Friday would come around and I would feel like a different person. Oh, very accomplished. You literally crushed it too. And Lauren like keeps me on task. And I swear to God, if I did not have you during this project, it literally would have been one of the most stressful experiences of my life (laughs) because it was so much project management. We are getting together things for not only the light pink website, but also for my website, just because they're going to kind of go hand in hand with what we're going to be all launching with light pink. So We want them to support each other. And let me tell you that getting two websites together, launching two websites, redoing them, rebranding, one in itself is insane. Two is just like next level. So we just got our first major, major, major deadline in, which was last night. Oh my God, it was the craziest. And I had like a, a dinner that was really important to me last night, just for so many different reasons. 
And I was literally, Lauren and I were on Zoom while I was putting makeup on, doing my hair. We were answering questions, like last minute everything. Woke up at the ass crack of dawn to see if I could like sneak some things into the deadline. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and like try to finish things because they didn't go right yesterday before I was leaving. And, you know, we totally could have been probably psychotic and neurotic together. I feel like you thrive under deadlines. How did you feel? I found that out about myself. I mean, I always knew I thrived under deadlines because I'm like, okay, I have to shift my focus under one thing and not 100 things today. So I always know that works for me, but I always know it's not ideal to do every day. So when I was doing it this week where it was like, okay, like you have the deadline Thursday, you have to get this done, even though other things need done. It was also like a good feeling because I'm like, okay, there's other things that need done, but they're not as urgent as this. Where on a day-to-day basis, all things kind of seem urgent to keep moving everything forward. But when there is a big project, it's so nice. I feel like I got all of this done in such a shorter amount of time than I normally would have because I didn't check my email hardly as much. I didn't check Slack hardly as much. I didn't email all the people back right away that I normally would or look into things or whatever. But it literally let me focus on one project at one time and have my mind focused on one thing for such a long period of time that I'm like, okay, I can understand right now what the homepage is versus the about page or whatever with, you know, when you go somewhere else for your email and then you come back and you're like, where was I? And like, how did that all connect together? It literally flowed so well. And I feel like I did better work. Like my mind was firing. I'm like, okay, now this is next. We don't need, we need Mm -hmm. to remember this. I wouldn't have maybe remembered everything if I was bouncing back and forth. Totally. I love that. I love that you're pointing that out because it's it's the truth. It is why. And I shared this with you when you were like, I think I work so much better in these like super contained pockets where it's like, this is your deadline. It has to be done in this time, even if it feels like something that honestly, this was something that we could have milked out over like a two week period for sure. And it was pretty much all done in like two to three days. And so I find that I work better like that as well, because what happens, it's the time that it takes to move from one thing to the next and refocus. And that is right down to like looking at your phone at a text. Then it's like a 30 second to one minute, you know, time frame to get even refocused back into your computer again. And let's be honest, Mm -hmm. you go to your text, then you're all of a sudden checking your social without even knowing it because you're now a yep. programmed robot like everyone else in the world. Or you check <laughs> your text so and you're like, I better check my email. And then you write back to one email. And by this time, it's like 20 minutes later and you're distracted. And then it takes refocus time. And you're like, well, hell, I, yeah. you know what? Let's go to the bathroom and get another sparkling water. <laughs> so you've now wasted like another hour or two. This is real. Like this is really how people oh. function all day. Oh my of God, like, you're, yeah, I'm <laughs> nailing it on the head. <laughs> Instead of like, okay, you know what? This has to be done like tomorrow. And if not, I'm screwed. Guess what? All distractions suddenly are eliminated. Yes, you're frustrated. But at the same time, you're like, oh my God, I've got nowhere to run. Do you know that feeling Uh where you're like, I have nowhere Uh to run because I'm out of options. Like no one's coming to save me. And now I have to sit in the fire of how uncomfortable this is to figure it out. That was totally Mm -hmm. me yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And you know what I did? I didn't get on Instagram actually this whole week. It's been very, very minimal, but especially the last two days, which has also been amazing. Like, Uh I think I checked it maybe at the very end of the night, but like, I did not check my Instagram at all during the day. I swear the last two days. Amazing. Only just because there's just the distractions of it where you all of a sudden are like, how did I just waste that time? Especially if you're like, if you're, for me, it's like, if I'm in my email and I'm like, okay, I just need like a change of, I just need something different to like change me out of my email so I can get back in. Like I need to reset a break. Or if it's like after a call, I'm like, okay, I just need like a really quick break before I get to the next thing. And sometimes I'll open my phone and then I'm like, oh, but I hate that because then it's like, it just feeds you so much info and your brain's already firing in the day yeah. that it takes the energy away from me so, so fast. Yeah, that's actually what I have found not a break for me. I talk to Chris about this all the time because he's like, I feel like I'm always busy. And I'm like, because your version of breaks is looking at social 
or something like that. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, it's because yes. you're filling your head with more content. So when I really need to go reset, I get outside. Like I try to go outside whenever I can and like take the data away because nature actually feeds you like the colors and the green. If you can be around green or water or anything like that, it's proven scientifically that it feeds you. It like energizes you. It calms your mind. It puts your mind in a different state. When we just go from one state of stress to another state of stress, because semi that's kind of what's happening in your brain when you look at social, it's just like a lot of bits of information. So you're having to like go mm-hmm. over everything. And honestly, I don't know if I've ever been on social where I haven't compared myself to someone else and lost immediately. <laughs> that's like not a great break, you know? So it's the like doing more. You see it and you're like, shoot, I need to be doing this and this and this more because I'm seeing this person do all these things. Yes. Oh my God. All right. Well, let's get to one of the questions today. Let's start with one of whoever sent in the question. Who do we have? We have Michaela McNatt, who asked this question. She said, how did you navigate phasing out of previous businesses as you launched Light Pink, both financially and mentally? For example, did you have recurring revenue or other income streams that would remain even with your pivot? And did you mentally focus 50-50 on light pink in your previous businesses until you proved the concept? Or did you decide to go 100% in because you knew it was your purpose to do so? All right. These are such amazing questions. So when I was thinking about starting light pink, I did have multiple income streams and one of them would stay the same, which was network marketing. And another one of them, because we had built that that up when we went really deep, like we went eight years of building and we've had it for, oh my gosh, probably 13 years now. So I know that I was in a, a different position than other people, but there are things that I would say I would recommend, like if you have something where you know that you could build it up to a place where it could be an income for you that is regular, that's always helpful. It takes some pressure off of having to make decisions in your life from a place of fear all the time. Not necessarily saying you wouldn't, or that's how it would be if you didn't have network marketing or something like that. But okay, so the first one was I had an income stream along with obviously my husband has multiple income streams and we're invested in in a lot of different things. We're invested in over 10 companies now. So with that said, yes, income streams. I had another income stream that has gone down since I started, which was we had uh, different memberships. So that was a regular income stream for us, fitness memberships. And then the other things that I was doing was launching courses all the time. And then also when we were selling a book and just different events like that or different events, which we had the Bliss Project, I was doing some other different events. So I did let go of those income streams because every year the Bliss Project was like a nice bonus income stream. And then all of our things that we were selling our e-courses was an amazing income stream. And while we're still selling part of them. It's mostly through Chris, but I have like that has dramatically gone down when I launched or when I started Light Pink. But if you're going all in on a business and you don't have that, that's not necessarily a super fun spot to be. Like if you don't have an income coming in and I don't actually suggest it. I think that you should get your income to a place that feels good for you before you go all in on that like life project or that thing that you want to do. Cause that's really what I did. Like before I started light pink, I wanted to get my life to a place where I could start to make decisions based more on exactly what I wanted to do rather than what I still needed to do. And like courses and events, as much as they were my life purpose, I also needed to do them like to make money. So it's really looking at how can you get an income stream that supports your life that gets you to a place where you're like, okay, this is like the money that I want to be living on. And then how can you start your thing on the side or start transitioning where yes, you're getting the income from the things that you need to make money from, but you get that to a place where you can now kind of like that can hold steady and you can go all in on the thing that you want. Love that. And it's a good idea too, if you could do something that doesn't require a lot of work like a course, possibly. It does up front, but then you just have it up. It reminds me too of like influencers who make presets. Not that it's a ton of money to buy them, but if a ton of people buy your preset, 
you're making it all up front and then you just have it live on your website or wherever it is, your Instagram, try to just Mm -hmm. sell something on Instagram if you want and get that recurring income from maybe multiple things. Yes. And I think that that it's always smart to be super diverse. So even if you have the one thing you want to go all in on, I got to be honest, like I will never be all in on one thing. I will always have multiple streams of income because the world is changing way too fast right now. And I am never, (laughs) I am never too rich or too big or whatever that looks like in the future to not make money on like smaller things as well, or try things out because those smaller things can become the big things. So I'm so all about if something piques my curiosity and I'm like, huh, I can really see how, you know, that would be like an audience fit for me or wow, I already use that product. Why can't I like affiliate for it or add it as a podcast sponsor? Like I really look at everything that comes in my world now as like, hmm, how can I make money from that? And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a really great thing. Or, you know, if I meet a girlfriend and we hit it off and I'm like, what does she offer? How could I like either number one, help her or let's be honest, like when you're incentivized to help, even if it's your best friend, when you're incentivized to help, you remember it more. It's just how it works. So, you know, it's like, okay, well, I just met this woman. She's amazing. She has this product. I love it. I wonder if she would be willing to give me, you know, a 40% cut off of her digital product that if I push it to my audience, because I know that her digital product doesn't cost her anything after the initial setup, startup and all of that stuff. So it's like, what would you be incentivized by? And then asking for that cost. It's very normal to ask for anywhere from like 20 to 40 to even 50% to push someone's product. If it's a digital product, if there's margins in there and it's an actual physical product that is really, really high, you will most likely not get that at all. So you kind of want to know what the margins are on that physical product. But these are all different ways to start looking at like, I know that you might want to go all in on that one thing right now, but I actually don't know if it's a great idea. (laughs) I actually, no, it's not a great idea. I think it's so brilliant to like be looking at your life as how many different forms of income can I get into my bank account? And not just that, how many different forms of income can I get into my bank account with minimal work, with the most minimal work? So if you have a podcast, could you record one ad for your friend or for that product or to be an affiliate and just place those ads on every single podcast that you do? How could you maybe have that person on your podcast? It serves as an interview that you already needed. And then you could point everyone to a link where you get a percentage of the product sold. So I know that that's a more in-depth answer, but I think it's the answer that I wish I would have heard earlier. Love that. And maybe another thing too, is just to add to that, if you need to acquire audience already, it's probably going to help you to do a couple of different things too. Like you can make money, but you're also doing it to promote this new business that you're trying to create and get audience. So mm-hmm. it's helping you in the long run while you're doing this work to get your money right now. Totally. I love that. All right, you guys, we always want to know your questions. You can text us. Lauren, do you have our text number? Yes. So text the words light pink, two separate words, L-I-T-E-P-I-N-K to 310-496-8363. All right, you guys, we're so grateful for you. We love to hear your questions. And until next time, earn your happy. Bye everyone. Hey, y'all. I'm so excited to share with you. Earn Your Happy is now part of Growth Day Podcast Network. A bunch of us are coming together to bring more growth to the world and support shows and brands that we truly believe in. And one of my friends is also on the network, and I'd love for you to go subscribe to his show. You guys, Trent Shelton has the most incredible podcast. It's called Straight Up with Trent Shelton, and it's going to remind you that you are built for this. I have heard Trent speak in person multiple times. I've listened to his podcast a ton. He's coming on the show and I literally cannot wait because this man just spits straight 
fire. It is like truth that goes to your core and makes you take action right away. If you want one of those podcasts that when you're just out on a walk, you can't help but want to start running and run through a wall in your life, this is the show to go listen to. So you guys make sure that you go subscribe to the show straight up with Trent Shelton. You're going to love it. Want to know a huge secret to my success? Okay, not only my success, but just about every single person that I have interviewed on this podcast who is successful has this in common. You guys, they love to journal. They capture their life lessons and what they're grateful for. But a lot of people don't keep this up consistently. And most people do know that the research shows that journaling deepens your gratitude and increases self-awareness. But did you also know that journaling decreases stress and helps you achieve your goals faster? In fact, journaling is a huge differentiator between average performers at work and high performing people. It leads to longer term clarity, confidence, and success. So why don't more people journal? Why didn't I journal consistently? Honestly, they don't like staring at a blank page. It's hard to carry a book around with you or a notepad, and they just don't even know what to write about or they just forget. That's why I know that you're going to love Growth Day. It's the world's number one system for self-improvement, and it's like all-in-one personal development in an app. And it has an awesome digital journal, and people love it. Growth Day's digital journal has hundreds of research-backed writing prompts for self-reflection, positive mindset, confidence building, and success. I use them all the time, and it makes me think in ways that I typically don't, and it makes me ask myself better questions, which we all know gets better results in our lives life. It even has prompts that help you develop a daily, weekly, or monthly habit of reflecting on your life and identifying areas to grow. So it's a perfect time of year to start journaling, you guys. When you sign up at Growth Day, you also get systems for habit tracking, goal setting, and scoring and improving every area of your life. Best of all, I get to teach there too, you guys. I'm so excited. I hope that I get to see you. I teach live in Growth Day every single month with a new topic just for you. So join me there. Start your free trial at growthdate.com slash Lori. Hey, do you know what the big secret is this year? And it shouldn't be a secret because this should be your biggest focus. It is building your community. I am always working on building and nurturing my community and everyone is talking about the power of community without an online community you just cannot grow organically or create a real movement which is what i know that we're all after and you can build trust or monetize your audience when you get community right not only does your audience grow faster but so do your sales But where's everybody gonna be managing their communities these days? And a lot of online entrepreneurs and thought leaders are turning to Circle.so. Circle is an all-in-one community platform. It lets you host content and create discussions, live streams, group chats, and memberships all under your own brand. And what's so cool about Circle.so is that you don't even need a website or Facebook group. Instead, Circle lets you build your own community site where you can host content and manage your members. You can even create locked and unlocked content spaces, groups, and classes. How freaking cool is that? You can put your content behind a paywall too, and you can charge different amounts of money for different spaces on your community site. Circle.so is famously easy to use, and it has a free 14-day trial for you, so you can go check it out, see if you like it, see if you love all the options. Just go to circle.so. Go check it out right now, you guys. Imagine being able to manage your community, start group chats and live classes, and accept payments all in one place. Kind of mind-blowing since this is usually spread all over the place. You have to log into so many different things. If this is the year to capture, organize, and monetize your community, head over to circle.so. You can get a free trial and start building your online community right now. Just go to circle.so. You guys, you get the 14-day free trial. So just go and see if it's for you. It's going to streamline everything and make your life so much easier. It's so freaking cool.